Good evening, I'm Frank, and I'm dressed for the occasion all in green. And I'm going to talk to you a little bit about my favorite green stuff. It's not spinach, it's not asparagus, it's algae. What happens in your mind? You think about sushi, as Johnson just said. You think about the spirulina tablets maybe you can buy at the health store. Actually, uh, at my last therapy session, they gave me some algae shampoo or even uh, fed me some algae tea. So you can do a lot of good stuff with algae because it's actually, if you remember, the first organism that appeared on Earth because to grow, it grows by the sunshine, photosynthesis. It only needs, once it's in the water, sunlight, a little bit of CO2 from the atmosphere, and fertilizer, nitrogen and phosphorus. And because it has such a simple lifestyle, only three little things, it can grow very, very fast, the algae. It can grow 50 to 100 times faster than corn or wheat, what you eat every day. Well, you probably think that's wonderful. You can make a lot of sushi. Well, actually, we all produce fertilizer. And if that fertilizer goes to the water, then algae will grow. And the more we go to the toilet, the more we flush, the more algae will grow in the water because they grow so fast. And of course, in the end, if too much algae grow, they also die. If they die, they consume oxygen. If too much oxygen is consumed, the whole river is asphyxiated. So that is the problem with too high growth of algae. Well, there, then my job comes in. I'm an environmental engineer. I try to keep the rivers clean. The United Nations gave us 17 commandments for a better planet, the Sustainable Development Goals. I'm the high priest of number six, make clean water. And of course, once you have clean water, you have a healthier life, you have more livable cities, and uh, you protect the aquatic life. So that is my job every day. I try to find better, bigger basins to keep water clean. That's what we do normally. We put water in big basins. We pump in oxygen to clean the water and to get the fertilizers out back to the atmosphere, nitrogen and CO2. So it uh, has been the story of my life, 30 years of new technologies, always using oxygen to prevent algae growth, to make sure no fertilizer goes into the waters. But of course, that takes a tremendous amount of energy. All that oxygen that you blow in, actually to clean up all the wastewater of the 500 million people we have in Europe, it takes two nuclear power plants just to clean the water. And as, of course, we now talk about sustainability, is that really the right story? So 10 years ago, I started thinking, why am I fighting the algae? Maybe I can make them an ally. Maybe I can turn them into a solution. Because they grow so fast, they can actually help me absorbing the fertilizers. If I control them, they will produce oxygen and feed the bacteria that in turn clean the water. So from that symbiosis between algae and bacteria, we could get clean water and protect our rivers. And at the same time, we would even produce a lot of biomass, a lot of algae, and maybe make something useful out of it. Maybe not sushi, but you might not know, but the fuel, the gasoline that you pump into your car today is nothing but algae from hundreds of millions of years ago. So that is the key. Convert algae to energy. There's a lot of oil companies trying. We thought about a very simple way. Just think about the Spanish pronunciation of algae, all gas. So we can actually convert algae once we grow them in a controlled, simple basin. We can harvest them and we can convert them to gas. Actually, wherever you find oil, you find gas because it's very easy to convert organic matter to gas. And that is what we have been working on, trying to maximize the growth of algae in a controlled environment to produce the best and the cleanest energy that there is, methane. Of course, it took us a few years. We started working with the University of Cardiff, the University of Almeria, first on small scale in the laboratory, made sure we could control the parameters. Very soon, we went to a larger scale to so it's not only a laboratory animal, we can actually make it work in practice. 
We went bigger and bigger to show there was an industrial solution that can help you fuel cars. We actually ran a car for two years on exclusive algae methane. And today, we can present you the first large-scale industrial algae biofuel factory. It's actually down in Chiclana, near Cadiz. We built two hectares, two football fields of algae ponds, as you can see here. They were actually inaugurated last December by the European Commissioner for Energy, Miguel Arias Caniete, and we're very grateful that all these steps were actually co-financed by the European Union. And today we can show that all it takes is one football field and maybe 5,000 spectators that flush their toilets, that produce the wastewater, and then all the 20 players on the field can have free fuel for their cars for a year. So you clean the water with 5,000 people's wastewater and you have 20 cars that move for free with clean algae energy. At the same time, you even saved all the electricity and other electricity needs for about 20 people that will not be consumed because the algae produce the oxygen. How does that compare to other biofuels? You might know that in Brazil, cars work on sugar ethanol. We get some biodiesel from Malaysia, from the palm oil. Well, both of those, if we're lucky, produce 5,000 liters per hectare per year. That's enough to move five cars. With algae, we can move four times more, 20 cars per hectare, without any energy input, just with the dirty water, not using any arable land, just using wastewater. And of course, with that, we have saved two of the biggest consumers of energy, oxygen for wastewater treatment and artificial fertilizer production. And in the same time, we have saved a lot of electricity. What does it mean if we want to fuel now all the world's cars with algae methane? Actually, to fuel all the 30 million vehicles we have in Spain, we only need half the size of Belgium. And Belgium fits, for instance, three times into Andalusia. So only one-sixth of Andalusia is enough to fuel 30 million cars. And with that, we can now conclude, the more you flush, the more you drive. And I can fulfill my dream, take my wastewater pipe, put it into my car, and drive off into the sunset. And I have also fulfilled goal number seven of clean energy of the United Nations and goal number 13 of protecting the climate. Thank you very much.